Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the ARC A750, the cheaper of the two new graphics cards from Intel. It's safe to say that just like its more powerful counterpart, this thing isn't for everybody. And I mean that in a couple of different ways. First of all, it's no secret that this will work best in a system that supports resizable bar, which is an option only available to fairly modern CPUs and motherboards. Furthermore, if you want one of these, then you've got to be willing to embrace the early adopter role because it's early days and the drivers aren't quite there yet in terms of consistent support across a wide variety of games. DX12 titles as well as Vulkan is where the A750 works best but even then I did experience some issues today. I'll be bringing you benchmarks from a range of games that run on various APIs and I've even got a couple of cool tweaks to share with regards to improving performance. Let's get into it then and to begin with I have to compliment Intel on the design. If you've been here a while then you'll know that I'm no fan of RGB or over the top coolers. So this thing hits the nail on the head design wise. There's a rubberized feel to the areas surrounding the dual fans and the back of the card matches the front in terms of subtle and sleek aesthetics. The box on the other hand, well, do you remember pretty much every item of clothing in the 1990s? That's the vibe I'm getting here, very nostalgic. The card requires one 6 pin and one 8 pin connector and has a TDP of 225 watts. The dual fans don't stop even under low load, though they are very quiet. During the entirety of my gaming session the card exhibited quite a lot of coil whine which wasn't completely off putting but it was definitely noticeable. I want to reiterate that this card is in need of some serious driver improvements and at the moment it certainly seems like it makes more sense for enthusiasts who just want one because, or for those who have the patience to wait for performance tweaks while daily gaming on an Nvidia or AMD card instead. My i5-12400F test system is fairly modest in comparison to what you may have seen in other reviews but the features that will allow us to get the best from the A750 in combination with it are still available, including PCIe 4.0 and resizable bar support. And I think this represents the sort of PC that would make a good pairing for this GPU. Apex Legends is the first game I tested. This runs with DX11. It may not make the most sense to play at the highest settings bar a couple of options, but from a hardware perspective, I did anticipate it doing better. I don't want to be too negative though, because it is early days. The drivers are young. This is still a playable result, but it's a good demonstration of what I was talking about before, I think. Frame times were however pretty solid. For all the online competitive titles tested today, I've used 1080p and for Battlefield 5 that was no exception. This ran very well on the ARC A750 using the DX12 API mode of course and the high settings preset. The frame times were good but I did notice a few stutters at first so I waited for the game to even out as it always tends to do before beginning the benchmark test. I played a team deathmatch on three random maps and combined the figures to get these results. A great experience here if you ask me. CSGO is an older DX9 game but it is still extremely popular. I've seen a couple of reviewers have trouble with this one because of the old API that it uses. I found that entering the FPS underscore max zero command at the main menu helps to improve things. The frame rate was hitting around 120 FPS beforehand, but after I entered this command, essentially uncapping the frame rate altogether, the average increased to over 200. Arc GPUs are at their best in DX12 or Vulkan scenarios, and because of the poor percentile lows here, I wouldn't buy one of these if CSGO is in your game library. Not yet, anyway. Now this is footage from a bot match, and the reason for that is because I wondered if bot matches and online games perform differently here in terms of the stutter and frame drops, but they don't. Not with this card, anyway. Cyberpunk also gave me some serious problems, high or medium, it didn't matter. I stuck with high for the footage and this went for textures and crowd density as well. The average was a bit better at medium but the 1% low was still problematic. I wouldn't say there was any stutter as shown by that 0.1% number but the performance dropped pretty quickly and significantly when entering busier areas of the map. Adjusting crowd density didn't really help either. 
as this is usually reserved for struggling CPUs, so I can only put this down to a driver issue right now. The same happened with my Ryzen system that I tested as well. What you've seen so far is a selection of games I had the most problems with apart from Battlefield 5. It's a coincidence that they were all in alphabetical order. As we move on to Elden Ring, this is where the Arc A750 really shines. I chose 1440p for this one and went with the high preset, turning off motion blur and depth of field as a matter of personal preference. This game looks stunning and at this resolution with these settings, it hits the 60 fps cap without any issues. The frame times were solid as well and it was at this point that I started to really warm up to this new and unpredictable product. Hopefully Intel will continue on to be a big player in the GPU market as well, especially if the drivers get better as time goes on, I really hope they do. Fortnite at medium seemed like a sensible place to be, maxing it out doesn't make much sense given the competitive nature of the game, but low settings don't look brilliant. Medium is a nice middle ground for visuals and performance, although there were still a couple of issues even with DX12 mode enabled. These frame dips calmed down after a couple of games, but at one point I went to shoot someone and the game froze for like a millisecond. I still got them, but had I have been any less skillful, I would have died. I'm kidding, I just got lucky, I suck at this game. Now I cannot speak highly enough of Forza's performance today, 1440p at high gave us a fantastic average as well as solid percentile lows even during this multi-competitor race. This game looks phenomenal especially when driving at dusk or during a rainstorm. This is truly representative of where Ark is at its best, a modern title built around DX12 from the ground up. I keep thinking of the saying, the graphics card of tomorrow today. I think this will go down as one of those cards that wasn't universally well received at launch but it'll become really rare and then everyone will make videos on it in 5 years talking about how underrated it is given how good the drivers get. Or Intel will abandon ARC GPUs altogether and by then this will be worth a small fortune. Seriously though, this will really start to shine more over the next year or so I reckon. Now in GTA 4, I want to show you something pretty cool. The game runs in DX9 by default, and it runs like me on school sports day, which is very poorly. I didn't even bother to benchmark it here, I mean you can see how terrible it is, but watch what happens when we use DXVK, which is essentially a tweak that makes the game run in Vulkan instead. This is literally a game changer. It's still not perfect, but we've gone from a stuttery mess to over 100 frames per second simply from adding a couple of files to the game's folder. Look up GTA 4 DXVK if you want a more in-depth explanation of what it does, or a tutorial, or comment down below if you want to see me test more games using this. DX9 gaming with Arc doesn't have to be bad. This tweak will work wonders for a wide range of hardware, be it Nvidia or AMD cards too. In GTA 5 I went with the high settings bar MSAA and left the advanced options off. At 1440p we were getting solid averages as well as a decent 1% low reading. This is another DirectX 11 game so again there were a couple of hiccups but for the most part the pure power of this card helped overcome that given the age of the game as well. Turning on MSAA and the advanced options will mean we see drops below 60 so I just didn't really think it was worth it. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered is another DX12 game that runs incredibly well even at 1440p, although there are a couple of graphical glitches, namely with the lighting. Sometimes the screen flickers and I believe this has been improved somewhat by the latest driver, the driver that I am using by the way, but it's still not perfect. Spider-Man also supports ray tracing and so does the Arc A750. It actually handles ray tracing quite well, with 60fps being achievable when using the same high quality preset at 1440p. This card has its problems, but over the last couple of days I found myself really excited by it. That said, I probably wouldn't recommend using ray tracing on this card, nor would I recommend using it on equivalently priced AMD or Nvidia products. Overwatch 2 will run on a literal potato, so I had no issues here despite the DX11 API at Ultra. Normally I'd say there's no point using Ultra, especially when playing online, but because it ran so well there was no need to turn it down. At least not for my preferences. That said, if you want to hit a higher resolution or you want a higher frame rate, you may want to drop things a little bit, maybe even enable FSR. If, like me, you want to max it out at 1080p on the Arc A750, you can do that too and still remain competitive. I mean, even I was able to get a couple of kills. 
Red Dead Redemption 2 was running with Vulcan here, and it ran like my horse, which was very majestically. Using the Xbox One X equivalent settings, we saw 95 frames per second with decent frame times. The 0.1% low was a little bit, well, low, but I didn't feel any stutters while playing, so I'm not really sure where this would have occurred, though it was most certainly somewhere in Valentine where I spent a good half an hour causing carnage. The Witcher 3 still looks good at max, and Hellworks was also turned up to its highest. Being a DX11 game again here, there was a little bit of stutter, but nothing too bad, especially as we made our way out of the city. 1440p at max was fine, but 4K was unplayable at these settings, so I stuck to this res instead. The RK750 is very much a 1440p or 1080p card most of the time, though 4K with FSR, or Intel X ESS, shouldn't be too much of an ask, where it's supported of course. Finally it's Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and again, what a solid result. 1440p, DX12, the high preset. These things combined make for a beautiful game, and one that runs very well on this card. Now I'd certainly recommend choosing DX12 or Vulcan where possible for this card, but that's not to say it's completely useless in older games. Time will tell how this thing holds up, but I do think that if Intel want to make this work and persuade you and me to give their GPUs a try over AMD and Nvidia, then they need to be on the ball with driver updates, releasing them frequently while constantly working to optimize older games. Games that are still played by millions every day. I'm excited by the RK750. I find it fascinating and I'll be following the progress of it while bringing you updated videos as and when things change. While this and the A770 aren't revolutionary in terms of the power they offer, they are sort of unique in the way that they are targeted more towards modern and future releases. Not necessarily exclusively, but there is a large emphasis on that. I like this thing, but I do hope it gets the support it deserves and needs. But let me know what you think. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.